Hello everyone, welcome to today's sit down video. So after my last video showing all my scars on my head, I got a few requests to talk about my prison experience. So if anyone has been living under a rock or only just started following me or doesn't know my background, I'm an ex-gang member, you know, I used to deal drugs, take drugs, be involved with organized crime and fighting and violence and all those things that my environment led me into. I uh, went down the wrong track for a while, ended up going to prison, got out of prison, got sober, went vegan, turned into an activist, turned my complete life around in it, like that's the short part of it. But in particular, in this video, I want to talk about my prison experience, um, what what's my experiences with the system have been, yada, yada, yada. We won't go into detail about too many specifics, but we'll just talk generally about my experience personally. So I've been in and out of, you know, just lock up, you know, where they lock that you might get arrested for like d driving drunk or getting in a fight or something. They throw you in overnight. They release you on bail. You'll have your bail conditions. You'll have to go to court, you know, for about a year. You might, they might release you with certain bail conditions, not to drink alcohol, not to hang around a certain place. And then you'll go to court and what they'll do at the court is they'll sentence you. You might get a suspended sentence. I've got plenty of chances basically for, you know, just maybe an assault here and there, maybe uh, drunk and disorderly here and there, maybe driving a car without a license here and there, driving disqualified, you know, so they'll, they'll hand down like a suspended sentence or something lighter just to give you warnings and I'll be on a good behavior bond for a year. Most of my uh, teenage years in adulthood, I was on some type of good behavior bond, some type of bail agreement, something like that. Now, I myself, uh, without giving too much away, have been pretty was pretty lucky, pretty smart, um, got out of places pretty quick, didn't get myself into too much trouble, and was good at keeping my mouth shut. Uh, didn't agree with snitching on anyone. That wasn't, I, I, I morally didn't think that that was the right thing to do. If you're involved in that type of world, I didn't think it was right to tell on your friends or tell on anyone. I didn't even tell on my enemies. So that was the way I, I did things. It come to the point where um, things got a little bit, more serious. I was defending myself. Uh, you know, had to, I believe I had to carry a firearm to defend myself. A lot of dangerous people around me. So I had a firearm down my trousers and I got caught with that firearm. So basically straight after being caught with that gun, they threw me straight in prison. Now, because I had such an unstable psychological state, they threw me into a section of the prison where they could keep watch on me. Now this particular part of the prison is for punished prisoners. It's called G Division. This was in Yatla Prison in Australia. It's called G Division. Um, now, they either put you there if you're on suicide watch. Uh, there's cameras in there. They can watch you 24-7. Or if they have to separate you from the other prisoners for some reason, uh, you might be. Uh, you might have the whole prison after you. There might be some type of violence, you know, that, that is threatened upon you. And the guards might take you there without your, without your consent, kind of, to protect you your life from the other prisoners or that you might just be a prisoner who was, you know, is being punished for some reason. You might have hit a prison guard or been in a fight or stabbed someone and they'll put you in G Division. Okay. Now G Division is just, it's solitary confinement basically. And you have very few personal items in there. Like you will get a toothbrush, you'll get like a few things that you're allowed to use. Um, you don't have any TV. You might be able to listen to the radio if the guards let you. You have a real shitty bed. Uh, they took all my clothes off me. No, no shoes, no clothes. So they just put me in this sort of like a smock. Um, no underwear, nothing like that. And this is where they put me for my first prison experience. Now, this was one of the most sort of horrible experiences I've had. Because I was, before this, I was on the run. I was on all these drugs, partying. Everything was going a million miles an hour. And then they threw me in this, in, in G Division. Everything sort of come to a head. And I was just like trying to process everything. And my grandfather had just died. So I was mourning my, the loss of my grandfather. And I, I couldn't even go to his funeral. Uh, it was really upsetting. And all the coming down off of all these drugs, thinking about all the things I'd done, thinking about all the stuff I'd put my family through, all the people that I'd hurt. And, it, you know, when you're coming down off of drugs, that, that, that was really intense and really scary. And the prison guards will come in twice a day for a cell check. Not like a normal cell check in, in the normal wing of the prison. This was like really crazy. There'd be 10 guards. There'd be one 
more predominant lead guard and you'd have to be standing with your hands by your side. You have to have your bed pack folded and made in a certain way. Um, the whole cell had to be spit shined clean. So that would you didn't get any cleaning materials. You used had to use toilet paper and water to to mop the floors to get all of the stainless steel on the toilets and on the on the walls without fingerprints. If they find a fingerprint, you're in trouble. If they find a crumb, you're in trouble. If they find a piece of dust, you're in trouble. If your bed pack isn't folded properly, you're in trouble. Now, I remember I was standing there and I went to scratch my nose and that's when I knew that this wing of the prison was really serious because the guard smacked my hand down. He basically said, if you move your hand again, I'm going to knock you out. Now, I've heard stories about that wing of the prison where, you know, guards have just gone to town on prisoners for minor things, for not following instructions. They might get their head kicked in you know, I've, I've heard terrible stories of people being tied up and bashed in there. Um, you know, that that's prison for you and that's that's the punishment unit of the prison. Now, I wasn't a punished prisoner. I was in there in suicide watch kind of thing. They didn't they didn't think my, my, my psychological state was stable enough to put me in the main uh, prison yet. But come four or five days in this uh, G division, I started to sort of come to... I started to like... The drugs started to wear off a bit. The, the coming down started to wear off. I started to talk to the other prisoners through the walls and they were sort of explaining this isn't what prison's like this isn't what prison's like this is more of a military sort of wing of the prison where punished prisoners go and what ended up happening is I ended up getting bail my, my lawyer a fantastic I had a fantastic lawyer he got he got me home detention bail so I was bailed to my house because I, I this was one of my first serious serious offen offenses carrying a gun in Australia is very serious um, you know so they they put me on home detention bail at my mum's house. So my mum, a fantastic mother, she'd always got me, she always supported me through these things and she got me on, uh, she got it approved to get me on house arrest at her household. Now I was released from G Division to, to home and I was like, oh great, thank God. Thank God I'm out of there. Obviously when I was on house arrest, I was still involved with the gang, still involved with alcohol use, substance use, you know, I, you couldn't sort of pin me down. I was really out of control. Got back, got back home, got depressed again, started drinking, taking drugs, you know, getting mates to come over and all that stuff. So I was on house arrest for 18 months before my sentencing. So that was a long time too. Now I'm going to skip all the things that happened on house arrest because we're just going to talk about prison. Now house arrest is a type of prison. It's where, you know, you have an electronic bracelet around your ankle. You can only go out if you have a very good reason to. They might give you one shopping pass a week. If you have a job, that they approve, you can go to work. I didn't work, uh, I could have, I should have. Uh, sometimes they might give you a gym pass. I didn't get a gym pass. Um, so I stayed home most of the time, except for those one day a weeks where I'd go shopping for three hours and have to come back. Um, so it's kind of like you're imprisoned in your house, which is kind of, it's pretty psychologically tough. Um, but I, I'd prefer to be imprisoned in the house than be imprisoned in prison after being to G division. I didn't want to go back there stuff that. So anyways, um, 18 months on house arrest, you know, uh, I lost a bit of weight. A lot of co cool things happened to my consciousness. I started getting involved with YouTube and seeing a bit of the, uh, raw vegan YouTubers out there. So I started to get seeds planted. I did juice fasting, still drinking alcohol and stuff, still eating meat. And that wasn't an ethical vegan, but I was partying very hard. I was using a lot of drugs. I was using a lot of alcohol to deal probably with the anxiety of going to prison, maybe. I don't know, but it was just a very uncertain time in my life and there was a lot of dramas going on and it was really, really crazy. Come sentencing day, I had a few sentencings that day. So what, what happens is you go to court, you think this is the big day, you might have family there and you know they say, oh, we're going to adjourn you again. And then you're just like, all that anticipation all of that anxiety, and they adjourn it. So they did that for many months, adjourning, adjourning, adjourning. Now, I remember the actual day that I went in to get sentenced. I'd been on about a seven-day partying bender. I was really coming down off of drugs, and I was really, really tired. And I got my mate, one of my mates, who I'd been partying with to take me to, to court. And he sat, he was the only support I had there. My family had just had enough of me, and they didn't come to the, to the day of my sentencing. And I do not blame them because I was a prick. But one of my good mates was there as my only, only support. And I just remember looking at my lawyer and I thought, oh yeah, my lawyer's going to get me off of this, you know, but it's a gun charge. Most people go to prison for it. But he kind of looked away, but, and I got my sentence handed down. Now my lawyer was a fantastic lawyer. I always treated my lawyers with respect 
And they even said that to me, like they said, wow, we're really surprised how much respect you talk to us with. And they even used to come to my house and drop off documents. They were really, uh, they were really glad that I was a respectful client of theirs. And I, I knew that because they're, they're doing the right thing for me. So I'm going to treat them with respect. I always thought it was foolish to, to talk with disrespect to your lawyer. Come on, he's tr the one trying to fight for you to stay out of prison. My lawyer couldn't keep me out of prison, even though I did 18 months home detention. The judge agreed that I had an unstable psychological state because of my drug use. Um, he, they agreed that there were certain, uh, I was in a certain situation where I had to defend myself, but it wasn't enough to keep me out of prison. And I was sentenced to 13 months prison where I had to serve a non-parole period of six months. So <clears throat> that's where I went from, from when I got that sentence handed down. I had to go straight from the courtroom, out the back, arrested. Um, so they put handcuffs on me and they get me in a transport truck, took me to uh, prison, basically. They took me to the uh, one of the maximum security prisons called Adelaide Remand Centre where I, you know, what they do is they strip search you. They make you squat over a mirror so they make sure there's nothing inside of any of your cavities and they put you in the prison clothes and that's it. You get sent off. You go into an induction unit where all the other prisoners are and and that's how prison begins. So when you're in an induction unit, it's kind of like the first initial stage of the prison where you know they're just working out where they're going to send you, uh, sort of to get you used to the prison life at the start. And you know, like you're really starting to work out your rations because you haven't got your first commissary where you buy stuff from the shop yet, the, the prison store yet. So you, you're just eating what they give you and which will be a sandwich or it might be some cereal that you have to fight for in the morning kind of thing. They put the cereal on the bench and everyone's trying to get the cereal. And some people don't get the cereal. Some people will be getting breakfast for others because they think that they might not be able to get their own breakfast. So they they might be looking out for the other people in there. Some people, there's a lot of good people in prisons, a lot of stand-up people who either, there's a lot of good, good things that happen in prison where, um, you know, just a lot of, uh, respect happens in there too. There's a lot of disrespect and a lot of people who are treated with contempt in there too, which we can talk about. But um, there's a lot of good-hearted um, guys in there who look out for each other, which is really good to see. Not a good place. You don't want to be there though. You really don't want to be there. But anyway, when I got out of induction unit, you know, I was training fiercely. I was training two times a day. Um, I stayed completely away from drugs while in prison. So this is where I got sober. And I... I from a heavy drug user for 12 years to no drugs at all, I've seen things very clearly in prison. I've seen where all the gang members were. A lot of my, about 13 of my gang members were in uh, the prison system. So when I went to the first uh, prison, I, I had a lot of people around me that, you know, that I was cool with. So that my, my prison, um, I d it wasn't very hard for me uh, because obviously there was a lot of, I had a lot of backup and you know, had a lot of good people around me who would stick up for me if anything went down. But but prison sort of opens your eyes up because you see all that. that, that that's where everyone goes basically, and you know, uh, the food's really shit, and you know, you don't have many, <laughs> you don't have many freedoms. They lock you down twice a day in the in remand center. They will lock you down at twelve or something like that uh, for lunch, and then they'll lock you down at four p.m. for the rest of the day. So it's a very early lockdown when you spend the rest of the time in the cell with your mate. You know, you might be playing board games, or you might be playing cards, or you might be watching TV trying your best to have a, to have a laugh. And um, after being at this prison for about eight weeks, I just started getting really comfortable there. You know, it was kind of cool. And then I um, got moved on to a single cell. And what the guards did is as soon as I set up my single cell, they sent me straight off to Yatla Prison, which is another maximum security prison um, in Adelaide. And when you go to Yatla Prison, you know you're at a prison. It's a big, like a big brick, barbed wire, shitty facility it really is especially uh, the induction unit there, it's crap. The, the back, the yard out there is just like you get a basketball court, shitty old basketball court, and that's it to, to do your, you know, your exercise on. There's no 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 weights, no no weight room or anything like that. The food is extremely disgusting. I was eating, um, you know, small little canteen, like aluminium packs and of chicken, and they might have sausages and all just really bad, bad meat. You know, not, not that meat's ever good because obviously I, we know now that all meat's disgusting and it's a hacked up body of a suffered animal. But, you know, they're not going to give you anything gourmet in there. You know, you might get an old orange. It might be a little bit old. It might an old apple, you know, shitty soggy sandwich. Uh, especially the food in G Division when I was in there, that was disgusting. A soggy sandwich and old mandarin. You're getting the scraps in there. Um, yeah, but Yatla Prison was the same. You get the same little shitty, <laughs> shitty, uh, 
aluminium thing of the crappy food that they'd give you and you know and you just exercise where you could so you do pull-ups on the on the bunk bed or you do push-ups you put your feet up on the bed and you do like uh incline push-ups sit-ups all day uh, in yatla prison in the induction unit you'd, you'd shower three people in the shower so you, you wouldn't have a separate shower it'll just be one shower room um and yeah i knew a, a few lads in there too but then i got moved on uh, to F Division. F Division is a working unit and uh, that's a little bit nicer. Everyone has a single cell in F Division and you have to go out to work every day. And, you know, uh, yeah, I was there for a little while. Uh, we could talk about the violence in prison, but it's pretty self-explanatory. Yeah, there's violence in prison. People might, th there's a lot of people that do dodgy things to other prisoners and they, they might be dealt out some justice they might get knocked out punched out some people are getting stabbed in there uh people might make a shank out of something and stab another prisoner uh some people will have a shank on them for, to defend themselves um you know some people might have uh snitched on another prisoner or done something bad to another prisoner while they've been imprisoned and when they go to prison um that day they might be dealt out some justice in that way um so there is many ways that justice gets dealt out in prison and no one talks to the prison guards about that because it's just, you don't do that. Um, you don't do that in prison. You don't snitch on your enemies in prison. It's just not right. Uh, because everyone, it's either, it's you you against the guards sort of thing. You're all in there together. So you, things get dealt out to each other, but you don't take that to the prison guards. It's just unheard of. Otherwise, you'll go to a different place, which is protective custody. Um, so they'll put you in protection from the other prisoners, which I didn't go to. Um, but many prisoners do go to protection and that's where the, the rapists, uh, the, the child rapists, um, the, the people who have been caught snitching on others will go there because they just can't go out into the mainstream. Um, or people that are just scared will go to protection. They're just afraid of going into mainstream. will go to protection. So yeah, from, from F division, yeah, like a working unit, I was training better. There was a better gym in F division. It was fantastic. I had a lot of uh, other friends in F division and I sort of kept my head down trying to train and get through jail. And I, I was exercising, doing burpees, running, oh, turning into a machine in there. Sober, first time I'd been sober in 12 years. Um, yeah, and then from there, they moved me onto a medium security prison, uh, which is called Mobilong. And I went there and... Um, they could give you, they gave, they give you a little bit more freedom there. You know, it's like a big school. So there's a big oval, there's a swimming pool. You can, you, you're released in the morning and they let, they lock you down at like 9.30 PM, something like that. Uh, so you're out all day if you want. I was training twice a day, running around the massive oval, getting sunshine, got a mass, got a beautiful tan, turned, turned all brown. Um, I knew a few people in there too, but listen, I was trying to keep to myself. I just wanted to do my jail and get out. Um, I didn't want to get in, in, into all the riffraff in there. Um, you know, I, I might've got, I got into one fight in there about someone was disrespecting me in the yard and I, you know, got in the fight, I punched him in the head. Um, but I felt like I had to, he was kind of giving me a bit of shit in front of everyone and I didn't like that. And yeah, that's, that's basically the only shit that I got into in there. The rest of the time, just keeping my head down, training, exercising. I was eating predominantly fruits and vegetables uh, because when I got into Mobilong, you can buy your own commissary. So I was spending $100 a week on fruits, vegetables, raw vegetables, raw fruits. And then I was eating chicken breasts and skim milk powder because I thought I needed to eat those meat products to get protein. But I didn't know that you could get it from beans and legumes and rice and you know, like I just didn't know. I, I probably could have ordered tofu in there, drank soy milk. You could be a vegan in Mobilong very easily. You could be a vegan in um, the maximum security prisons if you put the request in and they accept your request. So if they recognize, I know in Adelaide, if they recognize that that you, you're an ethical vegan for moral reasons, they would try, try to, they would probably treat that like as if you were a Muslim and you didn't eat pork. Uh, so if you wanted... Um, you know, or if you're Jewish, if you wanted kosher, if you wanted halal. So they'd probably treat veganism like that in there, but you wouldn't get much probably. It would, you'd still be starving half the time. But you can you can buy food in, in you know, in all the prisons. You can buy your own food. Um, so that's what I was doing. So people were kind of making fun of me. I was sitting there eating raw vegetables all day and, you know, but I was getting really lean and really uh, fit and healthy to what I thought was healthy. If I got rid of the chicken breast, probably more healthy. But yeah, and that, that was my prison experience and I kept my head down and I remember like the last week of prison, I was just, they were, they were saying, this is your release date, but if you get into any shit, any drama, any strife, you know, and, you know, other prisoners might even want you to get into 
to drama. They might even want you to get into a fight so you don't get released. You know, that's what some people, some people like that. They might be doing five, 10 years and you might be going in for a year and they might not want you to, you know, they might be like, screw this guy. I don't want him to get out. <laughs> not that that happened to me, but I, I probably, it probably does happen. <clears throat> But anyway, it's just a bunch of guys in there that have gone down the wrong track. And, you know, there's a lot of good people in prison. There's also a lot of scumbags in there that might get moved to uh, protective custody. There's a lot of, you know, obviously there's a lot of evil people in the world and they're probably going to end up in prison for doing something really, really bad. But for the most part, it's, you know, it's people that have been caught for drugs or, you know, been caught for fighting or maybe been caught with a gun. And, you know, it's just the world that they've been brought up in, the environment they've been brought up in, and then they've ended up in prison. So, you know, if you, you don't, you don't look at, a lot of prisoners, man. The most most prisoners are just normal guys who got went down the wrong track. There are your small percentage of them that are just really hectic people, and they're dang they're a danger to the community. They're a da they're dangerous people. Um, but a lot of you know, a lot of people in prison, they might be in prison for driving or something. You know what I mean? They might be in in prison for moving marijuana or something like a few pounds of marijuana just once, and then they got busted. Um, so there's some armed robbers in there. They but you know, there's 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 all there's all, there's murderers in there. People that have killed someone, accidentally killed someone, a manslaughter. There's all different scope of people in there. Uh, everyone has a story, and you know, uh, you know, and I met a lot of uh, good people, and, and you know, there's obviously the other people that you know you don't really want to mix with too much. But that was my prison story. I got released on parole, Home D. After that, so I got released for two months again on ho ha house arrest, parole. So I had my bracelet on, parole for another two two months. And then I had to finish my top sentence, which I originally got 13 months. Spent six months inside. Got had to spend the uh, serve the, the the rest of the seven months on parole. Got my band band taken off. Left the gangs. Uh, went down my little vegan track and stayed stayed sober. Um, stayed sober. Went vegan. Started speaking up for animals. Finished my parole sober, so I didn't touch any uh, drugs and alcohol. My parole stopped me from taking drugs and alcohol. Actually, it um yeah it really did it because they, they urine test you and they breath test you and all these things. So you really don't want to, you really don't want to breach your parole because otherwise you have to serve your whole parole in prison again. And I didn't want to go back through that. I just got out of there. Like I got out of there. The thing is about prison is there's a lot of drama. And when you're involved with gangs, like I was heavily involved with gangs, um, there's a lot of warring that goes on and there's other gangs that you got to worry about. There's other things you have to worry about. You know, you, you got to watch what, what happens in there because you know the there's a lot of people are getting hurt by other gangs and you, you got to keep your eye out and you don't really want to you know you, it's pretty stressful it's stressful you don't want to go back in there and deal with that type of stress watching over your shoulder who's going to get stabbed today who's going to who's going to come in this unit today or is it going to be another gang is something going to go down am i going to know them you know it's just it's just crazy crazy stuff so yeah I was lucky that I changed my life right at the right moment um, before I could have got any deeper, got, got a really big prison sentence and, you know, something I regretted and lost the rest of my life because of it. But now I've got this chance to, to spread a good message to help animals. You know, you might think I'm a bit of an arsehole, but that's because I really do care about what happens to animals being abused and tortured and suffering. And, and I do come from a, rough, a rougher background. So I might say things that you might go, wow, he's rubbed me up the wrong way. But trust me, I've got good intentions. And if you knew my background, you'd kind of know where I was coming from a bit more. Um, I don't think, I don't, I don't agree with enabling animal abusers. And I'm not going to, I'm, I'm going to tell you straight. And that's the type of dude I've been my whole life. So, so that's my prison stories, guys. I, I mean, there's not much to tell. Kept my head down, kept sober, you know, exercised. Um, got strip searched, squat over a mirror like everyone else. You know, there was a few things that happened in prison. Um, you know, you see people getting knocked out. There's a few stabbings that might happen here and there. Um, you know, that's just prison. That's prison. Do you know, bunch of guys in the same, in a, in a facility like that, things are going to go down, You're locking everyone up together. And, you know, a lot of people want to see better days, but they might be doing five years, 10 years, and you know, they're not going to see better days soon. So they don't really have much hope in there and their families are outside and, so it's a pretty sad existence and people are using drugs to try to deal with it and bringing their addictions inside and, you know, there's drug selling going on in there and, you know, just a lot of traumatized human beings who are looking for a, a, a way out, but they their circumstance won't allow it. They don't have family, they, they, they don't have many friends, they're, you know, so they're in a situation in there, it's really sad. But some people deserve to be in jail. Some people deserve it. Like, you know, you got these child rapists and all that out there, they deserve to be locked up, castrated and throw away the key. But um, 
yeah, there's also a lot of good pr people in prison that have just gone down the wrong track. Like I, just like me, just like me. So yeah, I hope that answers your questions. What prison was like for me. There's probably some more stories that in there somewhere like that I've forgotten, but for the most part, yeah, it's horrible. You'd be separated from your family. The only way you talk to friends is through the phone. You might have friends inside prison if you're lucky, which I was. Um, you get a visit once a week, you know, and there's, you just keep your head down, train, keep to yourself and just wait to get out. And when you get out, change your life. Don't go back through the prison system. Most people do. Most people do. I'm, a, I'm an anomaly. I'm an anom anomaly compared to those who go through the prison system. I didn't get a long stint, so I wasn't truly institutionalized. I was still had my wits about me to, to move on and do, do better things. And yeah, and, that, and that, that's how I led into my you know, what can I, what else can I do on earth other than be, you know, a gang member or be a violent person or be a standover guy or trying to, you know, do all these things and trying to be a hero or whatever. What else can I do that's a little bit better, a little bit more humble, you know, than what's more humble than defending animals that no one cares about, like pigs and chickens. I don't know. People just make fun of you for defending pigs and chickens and cows and, and fish. They think it's hilarious. I don't think it's funny. I think it's good. I think it's a, a noble cause that not many people are willing to fight because they're not willing to take all the backlash that comes with it. But I definitely am. I definitely am. So there we go. Thank you all for watching. I know this is a bit of a longer one. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you enjoyed seeing a little bit of more of a personal side to me, where I come from, how far I've come, and how I, t how I turned around my life. Leave your comments down below. What else would you want to hear about about my, you know, my, my bit more about my personal life, bit, bit more about how I come here. Happy to answer the, those questions. Maybe do another sit-down video like this coming up soon. All right, guys. Peace. See you all in the next video. Stay out of prison.